Our scripture this day comes to us from the gospel according to Luke, chapter 10, beginning with verse 25. Hear the word of God. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, he replied, how do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, and this is uncharacteristic of a lawyer, you never ask a question you don't know the answer to. And he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he fell into the hands of robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which one of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. This is the word of God. God. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we know that you are in this place, that your presence is here, and we pray, God, that we might humbly hear your word this day as it instructs us for life. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I admit, and said this earlier today, that I found myself this week in a place of deep grief and reflection as the tragic acts of violence unfolded one after another, each with a story to tell, each a result of generations of mistrust, building to a point of inevitable action with heartbreaking consequences. As we watch with shock and dismay the unimaginable events that unfold before us, we cannot help but first process what we have seen and what we have heard through our own experiences. I don't know all about all of you, your backstories, the circumstances that have shaped you, but I know mine. And I imagine that it is similar to many in our community. I know that I grew up in a affluent, middle-class, homogeneous suburb by parents who made it through the Depression, fought in World War II, were part of the greatest generation, and set me on a path of hard work and determination. I was educated, I had resources and opportunities, and a myriad of choices. When opportunity is the wind 
beneath your wings, possibility the sun on your face, and resources fall softly like rain, then hard work and determination can carry you a long, long way. And perhaps some or many of you, like me, have only experienced law enforcement officers in their role of peace officers. My father-in-law was a career LAPD officer. He walked a beat, he worked the riots, he booked notorious criminals, and never had the occasion to discharge his weapon in the line of duty. Several of our congregants have served as police officers for a ver variety of public agencies, and we know them to be men and women of honor and bravery and service. Our experience only knows the sacrifice and the dedication of this vocation. And so we grieve. We grieve for those caught up in circumstances that we have no experience. We grieve for those whose lives are cut short in confrontations that were years in the making. We grieve for those who lost a father and a brother and a husband and a wife and a daughter this week as they endeavored to keep us safe and ensure our liberties. This is the backdrop by which we meet the Good Samaritan on our journey with Jesus. Jesus had set his face toward Jerusalem. He was on a road trip and had occasion to share a story about another journey, a journey fraught with peril and difficult choices. Jesus is on a journey moving towards his own physical death. But along the way, he encounters a lawyer, a scribe, an expert in the Old Testament law who questions Jesus. And not merely, how do I stay out of hell? But he's really asking what is the purpose of life? What is the chief end of humanity? How do I live a life worthy and know that my life has meaning? But then, in an effort to limit his responsibility to others, the lawyer asks for a definition of a neighbor, proudly assuming that he has already met his responsibility by being an adherent to the law. And so Jesus shares a scandalous story that would have shocked his audience and pushed back on the prejudices of the day. A man is on a dangerous road the road from Jerusalem to Jericho. Think of it as Wilmington in Compton. A man is on a dangerous road and falls prey to thugs and robbers and is left to die in a ditch by the side of the road. And highly esteemed people of the community ignore what they see, choose to rationalize that it is not their responsibility, justify in their own minds that the risk is too high. And they fail to help the victim. In fact, they go out of their way to avoid the victim, and they create even more distance between them. But the enemy of the victim a Samaritan not only sees the victim, but comes closer to him 
and sees him for who he is and is moved by the spirit of compassion to act, to help, to aid the victim, to care for and restore him to health and to wholeness, foregoing his own safety and using his own resources to offer new life. There are people in this world who have been tossed into ditches, beaten down by the forces we know nothing of, beaten and robbed of their dignity, of their opportunity, of their freedom, independence, liberty, health, equality, and trust. And we are walking by with a million self-justified reasons not to stop. Perhaps we can find ourselves in that lawyer who is seeking to move toward life, who we share a longing for a deeper intimacy with God even now. And maybe we can become the Samaritan who is moved with pity, who draws near because he is moved by compassion, moved by the Spirit of God that is pouring into his heart to cross over to where the man is lying. This Samaritan has, not already, has already received eternal life, and he is living it there and now. This is not a first responder who passed by. It isn't a medic or someone who must give aid who is required to do so. This is an enemy. This is someone who for generations has been taught to be in conflict with the person in the ditch. He may not even know why they are enemies, only that they are. But moved by the Spirit, by God's urging to do what is right, he takes a risk and gives aid, and in return experiences eternal life in the here and now. The polarization that we know now in our society does not lead to life. Racism and injustice and hate are complex issues that often leave us helpless and lifeless. I don't yet have the answers to the complex issues, but that does not mean that I must be paralyzed to the point of inaction. I've said it before, that when a problem seems too big, let's break it down into something that we can do. Jesus responds to the lawyer's questions by teaching what leads to life. What leads to life is giving into the urging of the Spirit. What leads to life is seeing those who are in the ditch beaten and robbed and half dead and risking ourselves to tend to them, to bind their wounds by offering an early morning shower and dignity, by offering salve, by packing backpacks with nutritious food for the weekend, by making dinner for women and teens in recovery and worshiping with them and giving thanks for a second chance, by building homes, by making sure there are safe, dry, warm places to sleep, by teaching the next generation about faith, by giving and using our resources are two silver coins for the good of others. 
There were other stories in the news this week. Even the story of an unlikely good Samaritan in a jail cell in Texas. Prisoners, eight of them, who were in a holding cell in Texas, intentionally broke out of their cell to aid a prison guard who had had a heart attack. Risking their own safety, they banged against the cage and the walls until it broke and other officers could then hear their call for help. These were prisoners now outside of their cell and could have faced drawn weapons and riot gear as they stood surrounding this ailing guard. But instead, the deputies just ordered the prisoners back into the cell and began CPR on the guard and saved his life. The parable of the Good Samaritan is a story for us travelers on the road. It is a scriptural GPS, a routing for us in the only direction that God desires, the way of love and compassion for others. This parable is about the transforming love and power of God at work in those who travel dangerous roads in our world, moving us, moving us to the fullness of life, of eternal life, here and now.